I picked maybe the finest day of the year to check out this Hooken Hefeweizen. Now there are some superb Hefeweizens out there, and this is not one of them. We are on the quest for an excellent Hefeweizen. We're still questing. It's not a fine example of the style. Let's go ahead and pour it. It's got a fine effervescence to it, which is really satisfying. Color is right. The funky, slightly sour aspect of it is on point. The problem with this is that it came out really weak. It's only 3.6% alcohol, which is, that's okay if that's what I was aiming for. But in fact, I was aiming for 4.8%. I think the main problem with this is not that it has a low alcohol content, but just that it has not enough of a spice and banana. It's got just a little bit of clove and banana, a hint of it that, you know, is, is nice and pleasant. It's just not a skillfully crafted hef. There's not enough in the middle. You got a little bit of a funky sour taste at the beginning that I think is really pleasant. That's one of the things I like about them. It's just like it's over too quick because there's not enough body, not enough uh, richness in the finish. The mouthfeel is very light. You know, it's got kind of a lemony. As a matter of fact, I have something that can fix this. So hang on a second. All right, let me show you this. This is an energy drink of my own concoction. It's all natural, even the color, even the carrier for the color is vegetable glycerin instead of propylene glycol. You know, you can put propylene glycol with your essential oils or whatever other natural flavor you have. And even though it's in an artificial carrier, you can call it natural flavor. I'm not pulling that trick on anybody. I'm putting the natural flavor in a natural carrier so that everything in this drink is all natural. Grapefruit, blood orange, lemon, a hint of lime, and actually, well, I don't want to give away all the secrets, but it's really delicious. I just mix it up in a powder, and the flavor is a liquid, and I add it to the keg. It's actually a hybrid energy drink. I'm calling it Active, A-K-T-I-V. It's a sports drink in that it has electrolytes and minerals and salts. And it's uh, an energy drink in that it's carbonated. It has uh, caffeine, and um, you can add taurine if you want. Like, I'm gonna sell this stuff, and if you order it with taurine, I'll put it in there. And if you don't want the taurine, I'll leave it out because the taurine is synthesized. And if you want a straight, all-natural product, I can send that to you. Anyway, all that to say that this in a proportion of about three to one. I'd say three parts hef to one part active energy makes the best shandy I've ever had. And if this was an excellent hef, it would be even crazier how good it is. So here it is, pal. Mmm. That's really refreshing, and actually, it's nice that it's only 3.6% alcohol, and now even less, because I've got some more beer reviews to do here in just a few minutes. The next one I do is gonna be the Muscalunge Mango IPA. I mean, I've had some really good beers, so I don't wanna say it's the best one I ever had, but it is really good. I'll get into that next time. I am gonna share the recipe for you, because I think in the right hands, that recipe would make a really good hef. Go to the website, jigheadbrewing.com, and check out the article, and I'll have the recipe there, and when I make the next batch, I'll give you an update and see if it turned out any better. I had some problems making this thing. The first thing that went wrong is that I pitched a WLP 300. I ordered the stuff from California, and I ordered ice packs with it, but it came, you know, several days later, and it was dead. I did have a backup plan, 
I had ordered some dry yeast, the Danstar Munich yeast. I pitched that dead yeast in this wort, and 48 hours later I had nothing, no activity whatsoever. So I went ahead and pitched the dry yeast, rehydrated it, and pitched it into the wort that was 48 hours old. I don't know if I had enough in there because the attenuation was pretty low. Final gravity was supposed to be 11 points, and it actually ended up being 18. The next thing that went wrong is when I was checking the final gravity. What happened there is I've got a refractometer, so I took a BRICS reading, and then I converted that to specific gravity. But this is only my second batch that I had made, and it's actually the first one we bottled, the first one that I took a final gravity reading on, and I didn't do an alcohol correction. So I thought that my attenuation was very poor, okay? The apparent specific gravity was much higher than it was supposed to be, 11 points. So I went up to the internet and found out what I could about how to restart a stuck fermentation. This guy said, put your aerator back in there and aerate it to get your yeast started after you repitch some, some new yeast. And I'm thinking, I knew that you're not supposed to oxygenate the wort after the first time you pitch the yeast. Because anything that has happened after that, any flavor development that has occurred, is going to be oxidized and get a stale flavor. But guy said this is one way to unstick a fermentation, so I gave it a shot. I just forgot that the alcohol was going to change the refractive index. But it did hit me about 40 minutes later. Turned out it increases the specific gravity, the apparent specific gravity, so that it decreases the apparent attenuation. I went ahead and bottled it, even though it should have stayed another maybe week. I figured enough damage had been done. I primed, bottled, and this is what we got. If you consider everything that went wrong with this batch, the fact that we wound up with a, a drinkable beer gives proof to the old adage that it's hard to make a bad beer. Now you can make a bad one by spoiling the wort, getting an infection, but this illustrates a point that I'm becoming very familiar with in home brewing. You can miss your target and still hit something behind it that's adequate. I was aiming for a 4.8 excellent Hefeweizen with an emphasis on clove and less on banana because I don't like banana bombs. And so I fermented this at 64 degrees, which is the low end of the range for this dry yeast. I'm just learning how these things work and I missed the mark on the hef. According to spec, it's a failure, but I still got something really good to drink. Home brewing is where it's at. You can fail and still come out on top. All right, here's to you folks. Go to jigheadbrewing.com. You can read the article about this and check out our other beers. Leave me your comments. You guys that try this recipe, let me know how it turns out for you. Tell us how you did it so we can try to replicate your efforts as Jighead Brewing goes on the quest for making excellent beers.